the importance of items when you're making cosplay. Something that doesn't really get talked about. I've done stuff with the nostalgia box where I've talked about how to get inspired on projects or where to start on building and stuff like that. Not necessarily how in order you want to make things, because that can be whatever inspires you, but how much time and focus do you want to have on a particular part is kind of important. So let's say, uh, let's look at this. This is probably what I would say is maybe, let's call it a medium priority. I want this to look good, but I don't need it to look spectacular, if you can get my meaning. Having a piece like this look really good is great. It's, it's great. You can have this the best looking piece in the entire world, but you don't want this to be the best looking piece in your entire costume. I'll explain. This is just the chest piece. This is just going to go there. In the grand scale of things, probably not that important. It's just a chess piece. It's not an iconic part of the costume in regards to the general public. It might be an iconic part of the costume to the fan base. When you're going out to the general audience, like at a convention, and you're wearing this costume, having this be the most bestest thing on their costume isn't really worth it. It's just a chess piece. It's a good looking chess piece, but it's just a chess piece. And particularly to the filmation Ghostbusters, what you really want to focus on is the elements that are going to really be, bring people in. So, for example, um, the disruptor gun, I can't remember what it's called, but there's also the bubble gun and the, the disintegrator, or whatever it is. Those are two really important props in the canon and as a costume, because that's the stuff people are going to look at. People are just going to see essentially human-y shaped thing, so they're just going to dismiss the human-y shaped thing. If you have something that breaks up that outline, that helps. A gun helps, a prop helps, a uh, headgear helps, Ghostbusters especially, the backpack. The proton pack in like your movie Ghostbusters is a very iconic thing. You don't have to get that 100% right. There are plenty of people will recognize what a Ghostbuster is just by having a black box strapped to your back and you're wearing khaki. That's a Ghostbusters costume. If you want to add the elements and make it more impressive, that's your own thing. But, you have a proton pack on your back, people are going to notice it. Especially again, front and back the elements. So, if you're out in the crowd, if people want to be able to notice you, you've got to stand out. And in a, especially now, even in a crowd full of people wearing all sorts of costumes of various qualities and degrees and characters and all that, it can be a visual mess. So if you really want to stand out, you've really got to pick your battles. Say, well, I'm wearing bath. I have ears that come out. That stands out from a crowd. You know, I'm a tall person of myself, but if you're a tall person with ears, people looking throughout a crowd are going to see ears. And if they follow you down and they look down and then they see the, um, the white fur on the face, the nose, they might, they might start clicking stuff over, and the hair and the wig and all that. They might start clicking over, like, oh, I, I recognize that. And if they look further down and they see Bath, they might go, Bath? Why have I heard Bath? Oh, that's from Spaceballs. And they see the rest of the costume. Now, as, on top of that, I've got the flat foot from the one gag. And that's something people always see last, because they do look in head to toe. And they finally look down at your boots as they're looking over your costume, they'll see that visual gag. And also, there's the tail at the back. So if someone's just looking at you from the back, they're probably not going to really see it. If they don't see the ears, which are really more forward, they might see the tail. And then they go, why is that guy wearing a tail? Then they might... You're essentially trying to get the people's brains to turn over. There's... It's not a 100% accurate costume. The boots are wrong. When we're to call, they're grey. It's supposed to be black. I think the costume itself is a little bit too baggy. Of the pockets aren't positioned right. They're not 100% accurate. But... There's enough of those elements tied in there that they start to correlate together. Now, the important bits. Having the name tag bath really, really helps. So if I didn't have a name tag of bath, people might not be able to see the visual clue of the name. And as stupid as that sounds, that really helps. Especially for a character from the 80s that hasn't really been around since. But people go back to the nostalgia and they think, oh my god, that's space balls. So order importance. Ears are important. I didn't want them to be too cartoonish. I wanted them to try and blend in with the hair. The fur didn't quite match, so I tried to add some colour in there just to try and help it blend into those elements. Because if you can tie the elements together, 
it makes it more cohesive. But the, so having a good pet set of ears, and they originally were just like this, but I thought, no, if I have one slightly cocked, breaks apart some of that image and gives it a visual element. Uh, this is going into elements of symmetry and asymmetry. Sometimes it's good to break up an, a symmetrical character. Sometimes it's good to have a completely symmetrical one. Iron Man is a great symmetrical character, but you know, when you pose an Iron Man, you're not posing straight on. You're breaking up the asymmetry with position. Bath. Rest of the costume, I made it all myself. I wanted to get the visual elements right, like the big pockets and stuff like that, but I wasn't going out of my way to make sure this was 100% accuracy. I just, I wanted to look a bit crappy because it's supposed to be warm. That's why I weathered it, I dirtied it up, I painted it. The gloves, the gloves aren't accurate. They just brown leather fingerless gloves, but add those fur in, people get it. Shoes, there were Converse ones. They had some purple shoelaces. I tried to dye some, it didn't work out, so I just went back to the original whites. But they were supposed to be black. I, I kind of like get charcoal. Now, do I paint it up or do I just go? No one's going to really notice the difference. No one's. I thought no one's going to notice the difference. So, but I still need to add the elements of the feet. Now, do I go for two generic feet that Bath has, or do I go for the gag? Going for the gag adds an important detail. It's awkward to walk around in. I'm not going to lie. There is a degree of element where you deal with crowd that it could get ripped off. You just gotta be careful about that. It's also not something that's gonna be instantly noticeable, but as soon as you look down and people see the flattened foot, they get it, they get the joke. They get, especially with the poor outline, the cartoonish poor outline covered in fur, they get the joke. I don't have to explain to them, oh, that's because I had the giant statue of yogurt fall on my foot. I just can make the things happen. Don't, oh, please don't touch, it's still tender and people will still get the joke. And that's what I mean of importance. I could have just as easily have not done that, but it was important as a visual element and it kind of does set you apart from other people. If you go to the convention, there's guaranteed to be like at least 10 Spider-Men. So how do you make sure your Spidey-Man is visually more interesting than the other nine Spider-Men. You can go for different versions of the character. The problem is there's different versions of the character. You risk not being recognized. Or you go for quality. As most people just buy a $50 suit off eBay, you've probably spent a couple of hundred. You have the face mask with the detachable eyes and the movie quality costuming and all the things. There's ways to make yourself pop. Good thing about being an obscure car character is you can get away with so much more, but at the same time, you're gonna be obscure, so pick your poison. Uh, the TLDR is basically, just think about how much you, emphasis you wanna put on a costume as you're building it. If it's just simple clothing, then don't worry too much about it. Focus on another thing, which is gonna require more help, especially if it's gonna be something that you know it's gonna take a long time to get this right. Focus on getting those things done well. Then not have to be perfect, but done well. I probably didn't need to spend half as much time on this, to be honest, and I did this pretty quickly, but I wanted this to be part of my costume and look good. I could have spent another five, 10 hours making sure all these lines were perfectly smooth, the paint polish was perfect, and then getting that perfect set of chrome. That could have easily taken me another 20 hours, realistically speaking, just to get everything perfect. But some of these lines are a bit shit. I don't care. People aren't gonna notice that. And from five foot away, 10 foot away, no one's gonna notice. No one's gonna notice any of those errors. So don't even go overboard with worry about, oh, I didn't get this right. No one's gonna notice. And that's one of the big tips. You yourself can want to be 110% accurate to the original thing. People bust their ass to try and get the proton packs screen accurate. There's no such thing as screen accurate in these cases. The guy on the convention floor doesn't know. The other Ghostbusters might know. They've also studied their own stuff. No one else is gonna know. Don't focus on your other busters. Focus on everyone else. That's not to say be sloppy, be lazy. Just know that that 20 hours you've done researching that extra plate on the pack that's hidden behind the cable to make sure you got the dimensions perfectly right, no one's going to see it. And that's not to meant to be a derogatory way. That's not meant to be like, you know, don't worry about it. No one's really going to pay attention because they're too busy going, wow, I love your Proton Pack. If you've got all the time and money to spare, do it. Go ahead, make it the best thing you can ever make. But don't forget to have fun. And part of, part of the fun of cosplay is going out there and interacting. If you want to add more, 
add more. If you want lights and sound, add lights and sound. If you want to have all the bells and whistles, do it. Know your dates, know your uh, know when everything is gonna turn up. Set yourself goals to accomplish that. Even if it's gonna be one of those things that takes you three years, have an idea of where you wanna go with it. And crucially, have an idea of where you wanna stop with it. Because stopping is almost equally as hard as starting. Because sometimes you don't wanna stop, you want it to be perfect. And perfection is a very hard thing to find. Anyway, I've rambled on a bit too long. Um, please like, share, subscribe, all that usual guff. And uh, look forward to talking to you again. See ya.